Thank <laughs>
Been, you've been a patient here for a long time, actually, haven't you? Since you were quite small. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. we know quite a bit about you. Um, can I just check, do you think your hearing has changed at all throughout your life, or has it pretty much ch um, stayed the same? Right, in the last few years, I feel like it's completely going down, and I feel like I'm having problems with understanding people. In the last year ago, it had completely had a knock-on effect. From me. Okay. And is that what's prompted you to come for the cochlear implant or is it something that you've been thinking about? I've been thinking about it for like um, a really long time, maybe it was seven years. And it's just, I need to go about my hearing things all the time and that, and now that, you know, but then my hearing went down and I feel I became a little bit more isolated. So it's like I just want to be able to um, take part in conversation again. I want to be able to be part of both the, if like, I can't see that I have to be in that one or that one, it's like, that's yeah, ridiculous. They're not mutually exclusive, exactly. are they? Exactly, they be like, yeah. no, can can be part part yeah. What we'll do first of all is just do the, the speech tests and get those done. Okay. And that can help to inform us about what the likely benefits of the implant would be. Right, we'll just go into the, the room. To begin with, um, a man is going to come on the screen. Okay. He's going to say a sentence. Okay. And I want you to try and tell me what you think he said. Don't worry about passing or failing this test. It's, okay. just, a, it's just a measurement of, of what you're doing now. Okay. Can you see the flock of sheep running across the field? Can you see the flock of sheep running across the field? Can you get a boat of sheep and something to do with the beef? Do you think the ice on the roads will melt by this evening? Rubbing the something but quicker than the TV. What was the last word that you said then? Um, you had the something but quicker than the TV. And the TV, did you say? Um, yeah. She has a cold. You are like the cold, cold, whatever. Okay, that's fine, thank you. The next part of the test we're going to do is to try it when you can't see the face which is probably going to be really yeah, difficult. Right. It might be impossible, but we'll try it and see. The postman shut the gate. Nope. They're looking at the clock. Something to do with cup. The bag bumps on the ground. 
the rain came down. Nope. The ice cream was pink. The back one was purple. Yeah. Mm, okay. We'll just go back into the other room where we were before. So those tests are quite important because they can help us to think about what if you had a cochlear implant, how much better that would be. It has the potential to help you, but only okay. a little bit. And the reason for that is because mm. really the, the nerves of hearing haven't mm. been stimulated normally all of your life, mm -hmm. particularly those high frequencies where you've never heard them. Yeah. So they are gonna be a struggle for you and they're, they are the things that people who've been deaf all their lives often tell us about. Yeah. They're the things that they really find hard. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that you really need to think quite carefully and quite hard about to decide, you know, okay, it's going to give you a little bit of help, but then you've got to have an operation. Mm -hmm. You've got to have surgery with the risks that, that go with that. Um, you're going to spend a year or even potentially longer than that trying to get the maximum benefit from the implant. And I don't want you to make a decision now because we need to think a bit more carefully as well about whether we think the implant is the right thing for you. It's a two-way decision-making process really. I don't know. I'm just afraid that because at the moment I'm not able to um, I'm thank you but I'm not really wrong to be able to so with that. I got a lot of no but I just want to be able to so thank you for enough for that at the moment. I'm not getting that. Mm -hmm. So if that brings that, that's going to make me think that's why I need to try to have that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do. I'm sorry, I've got tissues. I've got no of this for me. Uh, if it's massive, no. Uh, you know what I mean? I think it, I mean, it, it, out there in the real world is really tough to be able to hear in, in the circumstances you're describing, you know, when you're out with, with friends, when you're out in group situations, when you're out and lots of people are all talking at the same time. Those, those situations are really tough when you can't, when you can't hear 100%. Um, and, and, and I suppose what I'm trying to get over to you in, in, in all of this is that actually if you have a cochlear implant, that's not going to transform those situations mm. for you either. It might not suddenly transform things for you. No. But I just think you'll be in trouble. What? But I just think. But I just think you'll be in trouble. I'm sorry. Not for long. Thank you. 
Tails for you, okay? Heads, you ch stay or change. Stay, okay? You got the ball. Okay, good luck. Good luck. Best of luck. Good luck. Okay. You're looking. I'm going to stop playing. But, no, but. Okay, right there, there go. Go, go, 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 go. Who are we? Who are we? One, two, three, two, three, two. So about 40% of our women deliver in the pool. About 55% use the pool for labour. Because sometimes... Yeah, in labour, but then they're born maybe uh -huh. outside. Yes, that's 55 It depends on the mother, it depends on the baby. You know, if the midwife is happy, if you're safe, then you're allowed to stay. If there's any issues and you come out, I might at the end say I want to get out. Yeah. Who knows? My aim, yes, is to give birth in the pool, but we will see. Okay, so if you're having difficulty pushing, then we would recommend that you go on this marvellous love seat. <laughs> okay. So I'll show you so that you know now. And then in labour, you can just point and go if... Because even in pain, you might find even signing hard. <laughs> because yeah. a lot of women that speak English don't talk. Because they're focused on the birth. Yeah. So you can just yeah, go... Right. But their ears are working, so they can hear what the midwife well, yeah. is saying. Yeah. Whereas with me, I need to look at someone. So for me to lip read during labour is impossible. Mm -hmm. But I can look and watch sign language yeah. Um, yeah. as if someone could hear English. Yeah. But for me, yes, I wouldn't be able to lip read no, but... you out. So, come. So this. Very good. <laughs> so you this way. <laughs> I'll take your phone. 
<laughs> it's like a love swing, eh? <laughs> when the contractions come to push, she holds on to this. Right. <laughs> Do most women like using this? Love it. Oh, interesting. It's very, very comfortable. In between the contractions, she might want to rest. So that's why we... Then she can rest back and he love, you love, can. love. <laughs> very good. <laughs> that's perfect. So it's right now, it's a little bit embarrassing to do it, but I guess when you're on the spot and you're in pain, you don't really care, right, How, what you look like. You'll just get and, on and do well, whatever. Lots right. of women, I think, like this because the husband just sees the baby rather than the vagina. I don't think he, I'm really that bothered. Yeah, I want to see if there's a boy or girl, I'll be pushing her out of the way. But then we're here. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We can, so the bit home, she goes straight to the hospital. Yeah. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Because, yeah, because yeah. No, 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 it was after two o'clock. Yes, yeah. Come and have a seat over here. Thank you. Okay. Right. You've seen my colleague, Professor Saeed, already, and you've had some tests and investigations done. 
We've had a chat about it and we think that you would get some benefit from the cochlear implant. We are happy, happy to offer you a cochlear implant if that's what you want. And it sounds as though that is what you want. Okay. I know it's not going to make me become hearing, that, but it, I know things will improve a little. And that improvement is more than I would have without. If it only improves 5%, then that 5% is more than I would have had without. So I think for Professor Saeed, he may have a list available at the end of this month, if you're interested. Uh, yes. Um, OK. You mean this month? Yes, 31st of March, I think we're looking at. Oh, when do I need to let you know? You can think about it, don't worry. Good. Good. So, come with me.
Dr. Aurora, I'm registrar. Uh, the midwife was telling me that you were saying you couldn't feel baby move. Is that right? Yeah, recently the movements have become much less. Just it's gradually become less every week. And you came in ten days ago with um, reduced movements as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is now the second time. We can offer you induction of labor, where we start the labor process. And you mentioned you're already getting Braxton Hicks. So th is that the pessary being put? Right. Yes. Yes. I wanted to ask you, does yes. that mean I can't do the birthing pool if we have it, if it's induced? So, yes, if, if you want to have the birthing pool, then it has to be low risk. So, so that means you can't induce? No. Uh, so if, if we decide to induce, then we would recommend your own labour ward. Could I just have a brief talk with my yeah, wife? Of course. Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> I don't know whether I should interpret this or not. So, you know, you've been worrying for the last... You've been worrying for ten days about less movements and everything, you know. I do understand that you want to have the pool and everything. I know you want to do it naturally and everything, but if it's putting the baby at any risk... You know, it's not an injection or anything. The, you know, in, to induce you, that's right. The... Yeah, to induce, it's not like an injection, is it? No, no, no. It's, no, it's a hormone pessary like which goes awesome. inside the vagina and it stays there for 24 hours to soften the neck of the womb to start labor. But because we are introducing hormone, we have to monitor the baby to make sure that our baby's coping with the process and therefore uh, the birthing pool is not appropriate. But are you feeling baby move now? Then I would recommend today. Yeah. I have something just here, like a little foot. So I can feel like a little foot or heel here, but that's it. That's it. Okay. Then I would recommend today. Okay. No. Okay. Okay, yeah. fine. Are you sure? Yeah. So no birth centre, sorry. It has to be labour ward. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Oh, 
Okay, so we've got a little boy who was born yesterday, the 24th. Yes. Yeah. And other than yourselves, is there hearing loss in the family as well, permanent childhood hearing loss? Got a show of hands. <laughs> okay. okay. So uh, my, my mother's side is hearing and father's side's deaf. Um, with Tina, my mum's deaf. But other deaf in the family, no, it's just myself and my mum. I don't think with my family it's linked to genetics, um, but I don't know, but I've been told it's not a genetically thing with our family. So it'll be interesting to see what happens now with the baby, okay. so... Yeah. happy to tell you baby has clear responses on both ears okay so hearing is all okay and it's all done and finished for you the hearing screen <laughs> okay. It's the first part, just the painkiller first. The first part. There's two parts. She's feeling a bit there, yeah. You're feeling lightheaded. <laughs> yeah? Okay, we'll see you in a couple of hours. Are you talking to me? Yes. Oh, see you in a couple of hours. Okay. <laughs>
How are you feeling? Hungry. Hungry? Good. Your supper is here. Is it sore? Not too... Okay. Right. But that could be affected. Mm -hmm. Well, the operation went very well. So that's the easy bit. Right, okay. Yeah, now... Now the real yeah. hard work starts. Okay, good. See you soon. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good to go. I'm going to switch all of it on. Okay. Okay. I want you to know that initially it might just sound like noise okay that's very normal yeah, cool. yeah yeah it's very normal that it won't make sense that it will just be beeps or ringing okay it won't be like anything you've ever heard before so there's nothing to expect okay. i don't want you to expect to understand me today is just about getting comfortable with the noises that you hear okay you ready okay switching on Okay, here we go, Abby. Right, I'm just going to carry on talking while you listen to the sound of my voice. I want you to tell me, is it comfortable or is it too loud? Yeah, that's good, that's perfect. So, if you listen to that noise, where is that on the scale? Where, where do you think that is? Is that comfortable? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> is that comfortable? Is that very uncomfortable? <laughs> where is that? Um. Hello. Hello. There. That's good. Okay. I'm going to carry on talking while you listen to the noise. Okay. Remember, you won't make sense of my voice yet. Yeah. But the fact that you can hear this noises. Yeah is a very good sign. You have a nice range to, a nice access to a very wide range of sounds and your brain has to just interpret that and get used to that. Okay? Yep. So, what does it sound like? It's like, um... I can always like a telephone, you know, so I high and go boing, boing, boing. I've been like, wait, thank you. Okay. Um, but it's like the moon court, the more I can hear you, and I think it's like I can start to hear my voice now. Um, well, my voice not at bungee like that you'll do, but I don't know. It's almost like there's a pattern, isn't it? Every time I speak, yeah. there's a pattern of the sound that yeah, you're yeah. hearing. So the brain is starting to hear when I talk. Yeah. It's starting to hear when you talk, mm -hmm. and eventually it will interpret what we are saying. How do you feel? I don't know. Um, but it's not the um, beep of calm down. It's not up high anymore. It's like quite low. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So the brain is already adapting. Only a couple of minutes into the session and it's not as harsh as it was in the beginning. So that's mm -hmm. good. Okay. Right. Just so you know, you've got manuals in here. But you've also got a DVD player with subtitles, so it explains everything about the process. So if you forgot everything that I said today, don't worry, you've got it all in here. Okay, all yours. Happy listening. Thank you. You're welcome. Well done. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, see how you go, but just listen and just experience the world out there.